Hi friends and family, this is Monique, also known as Bella Fontella, and this is a video helping you plan your journey to Egypt. It's not about the specific history, it's not about all those type of details, but this just breaks down everything that we did so we can make planning better for you. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to walk through my trip of a lifetime, a journey of a lifetime to Egypt. And I'm going to give so much information about our experience, my cousin and I, Amari, our experience, what we did specifically to have this amazing trip. Of course, yours may be shorter, yours may be longer, you may do totally different activities, but this is generally how we had a great time doing as much as we could in the amount of time that we had. Um, I also want to give some advice of what I would have done differently and things that I wish I would have done um, to make it even better experience, but I wouldn't really change a thing because it was what it was and I will always remember it. So I'm gonna start, um, I'm gonna go section by section and, and the pictures will flow as I'm talking about that specific um, thing. So, to start off a travel coordination our flights took off on a saturday afternoon and landed in cairo on a sunday night so i left at 4 p.m on a saturday and i got there almost at midnight on sunday so a day later upon arrival we greeted our guide um and he got us our visas um, for 25 dollars and this is the bonus of having someone um involved with your accommodations and guiding you through this experience so it was easy for us to get our visas and then we kept moving so shortly after uh, we exchanged our money i believe i transferred about 350 dollars american dollars into egyptian pounds and i would suggest that you ask for smaller denominations you you get a lot of 200s um 200 pound bills um, which are too big for you to start tipping early um, in your journey, which you will be tipping just about everyone who helps you or touches anything that belongs to you. Um, so you want to be prepared to give them smaller denominations of like 20 and 50s and, and not have to ask anyone for that. So just a tip. Um, and also that was not enough money for the week and I'm not a heavy spender. I'm very conservative with um, buying souvenirs and stuff like that. Um, but throughout the week, 350, I mean, for some people they're they're laughing at me like, well, did you think that you could? Well, I knew that I wouldn't just spend 350, but I knew I would be using my visa for some of the money. But 350 um, in American dollars and turned into pounds wasn't enough to just keep in your pocket for various reasons that will come up. So we then got our Egyptian SIM cards, which I wanted. I knew beforehand I wanted to take out my SIM card of my phone and get an Egyptian SIM card. I paid $15 and it had a lot of data to use during the week. And I honestly only ran out the last hour that I was in Egypt before I got on a plane um, because I had been using like FaceTime and stuff like that without being connected to Wi-Fi and a lot of the hotels um, I did not use um, Wi-Fi because sometimes it's very sketchy so I was heavily using the data in that orange mobile plan that I got all week long and had I been able to understand the app that came along with it um, I did download the app and if I understood how to um read the amount of data that was left, I would have been able to pace myself better. But even without pacing myself, it was more than enough. So a $15 plan for a week is great. Um, so we decided to do Cairo last. So as a result, we stayed in the airport hotel. Um, as soon as we got into Cairo, we were arrived late and we were leaving again the next morning headed to Aswan. So our guide again, um, our guide who was assigned to us to pick us up, walked us over to the Le Meridian. And this is the first person that we came in contact out of four people um, that we were dealing with as far as being technically tour guides. Um, so La Meridian was perfect for our stay. It was clean. The view was beautiful. The city um, of the pool, the view we had, the breakfast was very good and the staff was very nice. Um, and it, it was more than enough for just a temporary stay. So the next morning um, we would head 
back to the airport for our departure to Aswan and our actual coordinator tour guide met us Noah to take us um in car, by car back to the airport which was way more difficult than the walk we did the night before it was it's oh it's the traffic is crazy but we'll get to that so airport note um just want to let you know how cultural things are in this particular um airport and country when you have delays, nobody's telling you anything. You just got to like stay tuned, ask questions and look around you because up to date information is not really available. People are just kind of heard it when it's like, all right, this flight is ready. Go get on the bus and you're just headed over there. It's not like a constant reminder and announcements. So you need to really pay attention and watch people at your gate and you'll get there eventually. <laughs> so upon arriving in Aswan, our first um official day of this uh trip we were greeted by our guide number two of four um his name was hedra um in the airport and taken to our first activity and i'll talk about activities later but i just want to talk about transportation right now so this guy took us to our hotel for the night and met us the next morning we would depart by car to luxor um, he was very kind and worked well within the operation team of the tour guys they put together for us. So it was seamless. They were taking care of us. We did not have to lift a finger. It was just all put together very well. Um, so once arriving in Luxor, and that was a four-hour drive um, from um, um, from Oswan, we checked into our hotel. So again, just to recap, if that didn't make any sense, we flew into Cairo, spent the night. The next night, um, next day, we flew to Aswan. We spent the whole day there sightseeing, which I'll get on later. And then the next day we did a four hour car drive to Luxor. Um, so yes, this was things that you probably don't see during the pictures, but that's how it was. So when we got to Luxor, we had another team member waiting to ensure that our check-in would go smoothly, even though it was in um, my cousin's name. It was in her name. She could have very well went to the counter. It didn't go like that. Our guide took our passports, went up there, got us checked in, handled everything for us. And then we we got involved at the end to make sure we were getting what we wanted. But they really want to do everything for you. Um, they want to make sure you are comfortable. So we spent two nights in Luxor. The first night we stayed in, in the hotel and had a great dinner. It was a great opportunity for us to take pictures by the Nile and just relax. It's a beautiful view. The hotel is amazing. It's huge. Um, and then, but, and we went to bed early because we had an early start the next morning. So then we were instructed to go outside and wait for the van because we were going on a hot air balloon ride the next morning. Um, we thought that we would just get in a van and they would drive us to this field where these balloons were. Um, no, not true. Again, this section is about transportation. And so I want to make it very clear what that felt like. So the boat took, um, sorry, the van took us to the Nile. And from the Nile, we had to get on a boat um, to cross the Nile. And then when we got across, we had to get into another van that took us to the field where the balloons were. It was a super early start, 5, 6 a.m., um, super early. Um, and we went on a balloon ride, of course. But again, this is not about the activities. But after the balloon ride, um, the reverse was done to get us back to our hotel. So all in all, it was fun, but not what we expected, especially the boats. Um, this is when we realized like the Nile is used like a highway. So you have to be on this Nile in order to really get around um, Egypt. <laughs> so it was kind of interesting that morning when we got there to um, be transported to the balloons especially the boats um they were kind of scary they were bumping into each other one crash into an one boat crashed into another boat it was really crazy um there was like 100 people there all divided in all these different boats it was dark the water was dark and you're walking up ramps trying to get on top of the boats get onto the boats um and and board these boats the engines of the boats were smoking and it was loud. It was a lot going on. Um, but they gave you tea while you waited <laughs> to go to the other side of the Nile. So you zoomed over there. Um, but during this experience, I was just like, uh, maybe we're on a little ratchet operation here and this is not a good sign. But all in all, we have survived. So anyhow, after we did the balloon and reversed and went back to the other side of the Nile, um, um, the, we dropped off and we ate breakfast at our hotel, got ourselves together. And then we met our guide 
number three or four at this point, Hani, and he was our like real like Egyptologist tour guide who was going to be giving us really, really deep information about the sites that we were seeing. Um, it was a long day, but our guide and driver made sure we were super comfortable and had plenty of water the whole time. So again, this is really important. Um, you don't have these worries about how I'm going to get here, what kind of taxi, no, 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 you are just taken care of when you do it this way. So after that experience of sightseeing and all these Luxor, um, um, Luxor temples and all that stuff, which I'll talk about later. Um, the next morning we headed to the airport for our flight back to Cairo. So we did two nights in Luxor and did a flight back to Cairo. So once we were in Cairo, we met our tour coordinator. Like I said, her name is Noha. Um, and she was the fourth major guide that we were dealing with. Um, and she's the queen of everything. She Everything ran through her. Everyone who was appointed by her, she is like the brains of this operation. And and she is the she is the main one you're dealing with and will take care of you if you choose to use and work on with her team. She finished out our sightseeing with the help of another driver who stayed with us until the end. And this was really nice and helpful because we started to leave our belongings in the car. And I know a lot of people are worried about things getting stolen and, you know, all that type of stuff. I mean, it was worried for us, like your passport, your stuff, your laptop. Like I had to bring my laptop with me for work, um, for schoolwork and things like that. Well, you know, the driver was amazing, trustworthy. He was there to take care of our stuff and us um, and to get us safely around the city. So we were able to leave our stuff without that worry when we were leaving like the airport and not being able to check into the hotel. So this is generally how we got around Egypt. I hope this gives you an idea of how it really is to travel between all the pretty pictures that you saw. So now let's move on to the activities. Um, the activities. So in Oswan, I'm going to talk about the things we did not do and the things that we did do. And the same thing for Luxor and the East Bank and the West Bank and Cairo slash Giza. I'm going to break it down. So in Oswan, beautiful, amazing place, magical, Nubian place. Um, unfortunately, we had to pick and choose budget reasons and time concerns. We did not go to the Nubian village. We did not visit Abu Simbel. We did do a Faluka ride, sailboat, um, which is a sailboat down the Nile. It was beautiful. Um, the crew was great. Um, however, had I known that we were going to be on the water so much throughout this trip, I would not have done a Faluka ride. It didn't come with food. It didn't come with some type of experience where, you know, it felt like you were on a like a cruise eating or major dancing or something like that. It was nothing like that. It was just a crew, uh, um, a sailboat with really nice um, crew, two young men. However, I wanted to be in the water, but we were already on the water. So at that time, we could have used that money and that time to visit the Nubian village or to visit Abu Simbel. Um, so that is something I would have done differently had I known. But it's okay because I'll save it for next time. So when we got the Luxor, um, this is divided in the East Bank and the West Bank, and it deals with um, like the the life and the afterlife and you can learn all that in the history but in Luxor we did a hot air balloon ride and we went to Hatshepsut Temple Valley of the Kings we did not visit the Valley of the Queens we have drove by it the Colossi of Men Menmontnon Karnak Temple and Luxor Temple um we did all of those once we got back to Cairo we did some shopping at Khan Al-Khalili Market we visited the Coptic churches Christian churches um, like where Jesus um, was reportedly brought when he was a baby. Of course, we did the Great Pyramids of Giza, the Sphinx, and the Saqqara Step Pyramid. So those are all the sightseeing locations that we went to. Now I'm going on to cultural purchases, which is a huge part of this situation. You need to understand before going and get your money right. Cultural purchases. Um. So... We did not know that we were visiting most of these places. They were inserted on the tour because we had a tour guide who was trying to make this the best and most exciting experience for us. So we went to um, jewelry store, a jewelry store. Um, we kind of pushed one of our tour guides to take us there because we didn't know that this would be happening later. But we got our gold cartouches made at a jewelry store and they had all kinds of fun jewelry in there like onks and Iron Horse and other um, Nefertiti, things like that. 
So that's one thing. You're going to go to jewelry shops and get your authentic gold. Then there's the oil perfume um, essence of the flower shops. That is something you need to get your money ready for. Then it's the alabaster handmade art um, factory. Um, and the one we went to is called the Imhotep Factory of Alabaster. Beautiful experience. Um, get your money right because you're going to want this stuff. Then we went to the handmade carpets um, um, shop, which was the Oriental Carpet School. We also went to a shop that made um, the papyrus or sold the papyrus. It's made somewhere else, but they have all the papyrus and the beautiful paintings on this papyrus. Again, get your money right because you're going to get hooked in. Then there's general souvenirs everywhere at the monuments and everywhere you go. There's going to be people be selling stuff. Um, like the Nefertiti, like I said, Ramses, statues, Isis, um, the pyramids. And then another thing we got done was the henna, and we got that done at the market. So again, we didn't know we were really going to be doing this, um, but it was inserted. And so what happens is you go into these establishments, they offer you tea, they treat you very nice, they make you feel welcome, they teach you how the particular item is made. It's kind of like a presentation and a show. And then it's time for you to patronize them and again i'm i'm glad we visited these places because had i known i would have been like oh i don't need to do that oh i don't need that oh i just want to see it but i don't really want to trying to be like very conscious of my budget you know this is a really huge trip that is just not like something easy for me to do um but i'm glad that we were offered that and when i was at those places i got what i could for afford because i really appreciated taking that culture with me however at the end of the day it's business and you're being taken to those places to help stimulate the economy. It is an operation. They're helping each other out, which I don't blame them. I think it's a great deal. You know, the tour guides are taking them there, taking us there to help them. And, and I'm pretty sure that this just makes the experience good for everyone involved. So I just want you to know the deal about this when this starts happening in you. Like, otherwise, if you were just there on your own, you probably wouldn't even know about a lot of these very essential parts of the history and these crafts that are native to this part of the world. All right, so now we're moving on to food. Um, The food was very good, and it was like only one time where I was just like, ah, I, I'm not eating that. I mean, not that I didn't want to. It's just that it was not doing anything for me. I was only one breakfast that just it was just a bunch of bread and some eggs. Um, So it really wasn't nothing to be done. Um, <laughs> But breakfast usually at the major hotels um, consisted of lots of cheeses, eggs, chicken and beef sausages, yogurts, cereals, breads, fruits, jams falafel um tomatoes and beans it was just a, a lot of food these hotels that have breakfast have really really great spreads um some of the hotels have like omelets and chefs making the omelets and waffles and pancakes um so the foods have different spins and the flavor sometimes but there's enough to get your day started even if you're a picky eater you should be able to find something to eat of course they have cereals and milks and things like that so lunches were great. Our tour guides made sure our dietary needs were met. For example, um, when we wanted seafood or vegetarian only, we were able to get that. So one um, restaurant, uh, Kosharia Abu Tarek in Cairo, had a very special meal of the day that was vegetarian. They only made that one meal that whole day for everybody, no matter what. And when you walk in, you see the chefs cooking it and they're throwing it up and putting on a show. Something kind of like a hibachi where they're like tossing it in the air. Um, but this dish... Consisted of like rice, noodles, chickpeas, fried onions, tomato sauce, just a lot of stuff that just ended up being good. They squeezed like lemon on it. You see it in a video. Um, so that was great. Another restaurant um, that was not far from the Saqqara Step Pyramid um, was the Saqqara restaurant where we had an amazing, I had an amazing fried fish with a lot of other side items like the eggplant and things like that. Oh yeah, fried eggplant. Mm, that was so good. Mm, especially with the Lebna cheat. Mm. Anyhow. But at this particular restaurant, the bread was made from stone oven outside. Um, it was really nice. The lady was sitting on the ground making the bread um, for everyone's meals. Um, and then in lunch in Luxor, we ate a place at a place called Africa Restaurant. It was like a rooftop restaurant, beautiful views. The food was just so good. The chicken it was just amazing. Um, at Steigenberger Hotel in Luxor, we had an amazing Lebanese dinner. Um, and they had other restaurants in the hotel as well, but the food was so fresh and fast. Um, and they had wine at the hotel. Some of these hotels do not have any alcohol, but that one did. 
The Mina House Hotel had a 24-hour restaurant, which was awesome because we got there late, was playing around, doing pictures and all that stuff. So we ate at 2 a.m. and that was really cool. Um, so it's kind of like a resort. And then um, when we were on the Hesa Island, which was the Nubian house, the Arti Hesa, we had a specially prepared meal, whatever we want, whatever we wished. So we had fish done two ways, a grilled fish that almost seemed fried and then a tagine fish that was like in a tomato sauce sitting in the, the dish. So that was like baked fresh to our, <laughs> upon our arrival and upon our request, like anything we wanted. Um, and of course, no pork in this part of the world just in case you forgot. Um, and lastly, we ate at the rotating restaurant at the Now Tower Hotel. Um, it has a prefix menu, so you get three or four choices and for a set amount of money. And the only reason we were at that hotel is because of that um, rotating restaurant to be something big for our birthday. So I'm gonna talk about accommodations now. So we hopped around a lot, um, which I suggest that you do things a little slower than what we did. I would suggest staying at the same hotel a couple of days in a row. Um, we made it through, but we were in pretty good shape and young and vibrant, but our bodies still suffer from the jet lag and the constant movement in the early days and the long days. So be prepared. Um, see, money is an, was, is an object for us. And so we had to do a lot in a limited amount of time. Um, so we did reduce travel by saving Cairo for last. So again, I already told you, we immediately left Cairo um, the next morning and, and um, did not waste time going in and out of the city because that is a time waster. It takes like an hour to get into Cairo to do things and to get back out. So that saved us time. You land and go out. However, um, it depends on your style. We have people say like, Cairo is so crazy and so busy. You should do that and get that out of the way first so that you can go relax for the rest of your vacation in Luxor and Oswan at a slower pace. But for me, it didn't really matter. It was just more about being practical. So if that is something that's a concern to you, like if this is a vacation where you need to relax, then I would suggest go ahead, go into the city, see the pyramids, go shopping, do that whole thing then come out of Cairo and go to Luxor and go to Aswan. And then when you finish that tour, when you come back to Cairo, you're just staying at an airport hotel and leaving the next day or leaving that night or something like that. Um, but that's kind of risky because you don't want to <laughs> like have a delay stuck in Aswan or Luxor and then head back to Cairo and miss your flight. So please plan that carefully. But like I said, Either do Cairo first or do it last, but do not do it in the middle and the back and forth. You will waste money and time and the traffic in Cairo is nothing you want to be in, in involved with. You do not want to be in that traffic. You do not. You cannot. <laughs> you can't drive that. So you will be driven in it and you don't want to be around it if you don't have to. Um, so, um, so Lemurian was our, uh, first hotel, great stay as mentioned. The next one was the bed and breakfast in Aswan, the Arti Hesa or Hesa Arti. It's a bed and breakfast it is the one that made our meals as we wished upon our arrival. Um, it is like a boutique hotel that sits on a hill. You have to take a, um, boat to get to it. Um, <laughs> and it's on a Nile again. Once you arrive, you have the staff dressed in traditional attire waiting to greet you, take you to your beautiful hand painted, colorful brick stone decor rooms. Um, we changed for the evening and again had our meal. We took lots of pictures around the property. It was beautiful. And the bathrooms are not luxurious. They are very, very simple toilet, sink, shower that does not have a bath or any. Thing blocking the water from running all over the floor so please be aware of that you go into that bathroom it is a square the water from the shower will drain on the floor towards the hole that is near the toilet that is how our room was made and I was told that's how all of them are made that is the only part of the hotel that is something you need to be prepared for um, with your shower shoes and just having enough towels and having yourself situated. Um, but if you're low maintenance, it's not a problem. If you're high maintenance, it's letting you know. <laughs> um, we didn't miss a lot of the entertainment that, um, 
that that was going on um at that happens at this hotel sometimes so there's lots of music um they have traditional parties and things like that and um I was told by the owner of this that we missed it we should have stayed longer next time I will hope to at least stay two nights next time and do again the Nubian village and other monuments in the area um and enjoy the property more but neither here nor there we we had a great time <laughs> So the next hotel was the Steigenberger Hotel in Luxor. Very great option. I will repeat this. It was a big hotel, but it did not seem overwhelming like one I'll mention later. Um, room view was awesome. You could see the Nile. It was great. Very clean. Very normal standards for especially like American point of view. Very normal. I would definitely stay again. The next one was the Mina House, Marriott Mina House, the most amazing experience. This is a hotel that is just like a beautiful property, like a castle. Flowers, just property, just beautiful pool, just gorgeous in a pyramid view that is breathtaking. When you eat, when you walk out your room, we um, I got more than what I asked for. I thought I was going to have no view of the pyramid and we got a partial view of the pyramid. And it's pretty, it was pretty much all that I needed to see to wake up and walk outside and it'd be a pyramid sitting there. Amazing. Um, so again, we did not stay long enough, only one night. Um, we did not get to enjoy the property like we could, should have. Um, so definitely we'll extend that uh, um, the next time or I'm telling you to, if you choose to stay here, you don't have to because there's plenty of hotels that have a pyramid view um, that are probably a lot cheaper, um, cute boutique hotels, but this is just what we did. Again, do your own research. Um, and then the last hotel we stayed at was a Grand Now Tower Hotel, um, which I did not care for. Um, this hotel was in the busy streets of Cairo. Um, they had a really nice big breakfast. It was just too much going on for me um, as far as the amount of people in that hotel for weddings and conferences. It was just too much. And it seemed like it used to be a really nice hotel because we had like a suite. It was like a bedroom. I mean, it had two bathrooms in this room. We had a crazy room I mean it was ridiculous but it probably was like ridiculous five years ago probably pre-pandemic but our room had like dirty spots on the floor the couch had like spots on it like we didn't have any towels we had to call someone to get our towels and robes and all the stuff that should have came with the room was not there um just it just was not up to that sparkling standard that I know that it was capable of having back in the day um, so again, we were only there because the rotating restaurant in the roof. Now the room was not great, but there were some amazing amenities. They had a jacuzzi spa. They had a sauna. It was very nice, very clean, felt very comfortable up there. The rooftop pool was amazing. The people who, um, who worked there greeted us and were nice. Of course, they were so happy to see us and we had a really nice time. People taking picked our staff taking pictures of us. It was just like gorgeous once you were in those areas. But our room was a little disappointing, and the amount of people there trying to be served at the um reception area was not good. And the reception people, only one of them, the one who put us in this upgraded room, was nice. The rest of them were not really kind at all. So um, just be aware. Uh, I would say the only reason you would stay there is if you knew you were going to do um the the market and you wanted to stay at the market and then just go to the hotel in Cairo and stay the night or something maybe but I would just go to the market in Cairo and I would be going right back out to Giza or somewhere else I would not stay in Cairo that's just me so just great memories um the rotating restaurant at the top was great it did make us a little dizzy um so it was worth seeing that view um of the city but there's a lot of smog in Cairo, so it wasn't the best view, but it was just a nice thing to experience. Um, the staff up there were really, really, really nice. And the uh, Grand Town now were rotating restaurants. So um, the variety of experiences within that hotel. So I just can't say I would go again, but I, I really appreciate being there. Amazing trip. I would only tweak a few things, which you've heard me say, such as slowing down, ensuring your tour stop before 5 p.m. Make sure that you kind of take control over that, it, you know, if you are thinking about your, your body. Um, I sh we should have been getting back to the hotel around 5 p.m. so we can enjoy the hotel that we paid for, rest and reset, and just take it all in. 
Um, but we were getting back like seven o'clock, eight o'clock. It was just all these random times that we were getting to the hotel and we could never catch up with our rest. So I would not suggest you do that. Um, so really do what you can do, um, but make the experience memorable um, for yourself that whatever you can afford. And um, like I said, I've given some so hopefully good advice to you so that you can spread things out and you do it in a practical way. Um, for example, I told you I did not need to do the Felucca ride. Um, even though I took a really pretty picture on there, honey, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like the pictures were nice. The time of the day was just banging with the sun. However, I was on boats the whole trip. We could have skipped that and went to the Nubian village and had that experience with our people and meeting our, you know, our, our, you know, our cousins or our seeing, you know, the other temple that we did not get a chance to see. So I do regret that, but it's okay because it gives me a reason to return and be wowed by other things from the ancient Egyptian world. Um, I just want to let you know that, um... We got all of these hotels for free because of our points. So that was a really big um, bonus for us. Um, so that cut out a huge part of our finances. We only paid for one hotel, and that was the Nubian guest house, Artihesa. Um, I did purchase my ticket in, what, February, like maybe a month before we went. It was a very last-minute trip, and I got a $200 off for getting the Delta credit card, and I immediately paid it off, so I would not have that hanging on my head. Um, so the flight must have been like, I don't know, seven dollars $800 for me. I believe from L.A. it might have been around $700 round trip at this time of the year. Perfect. Any A week later, it would have doubled. As a matter of fact, they had to change my flight. So I had to do a flight. Um, like um, I wasn't going through one city. They changed it. So when I had to look at the flights again and I saw the price, it was double. It was like maybe 1400 to $2,000 for the same flight if we had waited just a few more days. So you need to really book early and um thankfully we got in here before that spring break crowd the last thing i'll say is about the suitcase um i did not check a suitcase going but i did bring an extra bag so that i could check a suitcase going back um with all the things that i was going that i purchased as far as souvenirs my souvenir stayed with me um when we were going back um the oils that i brought were not over the allowance so i did not have to check those i checked my clothes going back things that i didn't care if they all got lost you know things that i wore i took my pictures in if they got lost oh well but as far as those souvenirs and those delicate items that was what stayed with me so i went with two major bags and went back with three um, so just to keep that in mind, um, as you travel, um, you don't want to get there and not have your stuff. So I highly suggest trying to figure out how to, if you're going to check a bag going, make sure the stuff that's in it is not something that is that important to you. Um, like extra things, um, never your toiletries, maybe the coats, maybe like um, your washcloths and stuff like that. If you bring extra washcloths and things that you can always replace if in, and things that are like secondary items, but not like your outfits that you know you're going to be wearing in those first couple of days and, and your toiletry items and things like that. So um, just be very careful with that. But all in all, it was amazing. I hope this is helpful to see how we did this, um, how we made this happen um, with the help of our guide. All in all, I just highly recommend that of all the things you do when you come to Egypt, um, besides the pyramids, make sure you go to the Valley of the Kings and you make sure um, that you visit um, Luxor and especially Aswan um, and visit the Nubian people. It is extremely important that you see <clears throat> this history on the walls, as you see here, visit all of these great, great um, living museums um, that are here for eternity. Thank you so much for listening. I, I just hope this is a wonderful help for you. Thanks. Bye.